Welcome to the deep dive. You know, our mission here is always to cut through all the noise, look at some really fascinating sources, and pull out those key insights, the goal, to help you feel informed, really up to speed, without getting overwhelmed. Today, we're diving into a story about, well, incredible progress, really, innovation in global health. It's coming from a specific part of the world that's uh, making some pretty big strides in HIV treatment and prevention, a potential game changer. It absolutely is. Yeah. This feels like a really pivotal moment in the, you know, the global fight against HIV. For decades, it's been about constant innovation, hasn't it? Understanding the virus, developing effective therapies, and the evolution of treatment isn't just about new drugs. It's finding ways to make treatments well, easier to access, more discreet maybe, mm -hmm. and ultimately more impactful for the people who rely on them. What we're seeing now really speaks to that ongoing commitment. That commitment is definitely showing results. So what's the specific development coming out of Zambia that's getting so much attention? Okay, so according to a Zambia Reports article dated August 23, 2025, Zambia is planning a major update to its HIV treatment policy hmm. by 2026. And this isn't just tweaking things. It's a big shift. They're introducing long-acting injectable ARVs. ARVs, antiretroviral drugs. Right. Exactly, antiretrovirals. They've been the absolute foundation of HIV treatment for years now. They work by stopping the virus replicating, basically keeping the immune system strong, preventing HIV progressing to AIDS. And usually when we talk ARVs, that means daily pills. That's the standard. That's right. Daily oral regimens. And while they're incredibly effective, taking pills every single day. That's yeah. a real challenge for a lot of people. You have to remember every day, often at a certain time, it affects your routine, travel, it can lead to, you know, treatment fatigue. So here in sticking to a daily schedule, it's crucial, but it's tough. Okay, so how big a difference does an injection make then? The source says these new ones are only twice a year. Twice a year, yeah. That sounds revolutionary. It's a complete paradigm shift, really. Think about what that means practically. Instead of that daily reminder, the pill bottles, worrying if you missed a dose. Now it's just a simple treatment twice a year. Wow. It cuts down clinic visits drastically, simplifies the whole routine. It just frees up so much mental energy, lets people focus on living, not just managing medication day in, day out. It's a massive step forward in, like patient-centered care. It tackles those adherence barriers head on. Definitely sounds like it would change daily life significantly. So what's the timeline? When might this actually start and who gets it first? Well, according to Dr. Chimica Thore, she's the HIV prevention lead at Zambia's Ministry of Health. They're aiming to start as early as January 2026. OK, so pretty soon. Yeah. And the initial rollout, it's going to prioritize patients who are currently on what's called third line treatment. Third line treatment. Can you unpack that a bit? What does that signal about their strategy starting there? Sure. So in HIV treatment, you have lines of therapy. Think of them as sequences of drug combinations. First line is what you usually start with. If that causes side effects or maybe the virus develops resistance, you might move to second line and then potentially third line. Ah, okay. So starting with the third line group suggests um, a really strategic and I think compassionate approach. Mm. These patients might have more complex situations. Maybe they struggle more with adherence to daily pills, or perhaps their virus is harder to suppress with the standard options. For them, these long-acting injectables could be a much more effective and, frankly, less burdensome solution. Better outcomes, better quality of life. Right. And beyond just how well the drugs work, there's this other layer you mentioned, the human impact. Right. Dr. Fury said this plan shows the government's commitment to modern approaches, and they highlighted two big goals. Better accessibility, sure, but also reducing social stigma. That feels huge. It is huge. Reducing stigma in healthcare, especially around HIV, is just monumental. So how exactly do injectable ARVs provide that needed discretion that maybe the pills didn't? Well, stigma is still one of the biggest hurdles, right, globally. Yeah. For HIV prevention, for treatment. Daily pills, even though they're life-saving, can be a constant visible reminder of someone's status carrying pill bottles, having to take them maybe where others might see, sticking to that strict schedule. It can open people up to questions, judgment, even discrimination. Mm, I see. And that fear, unfortunately, can lead people to skip doses or avoid medication altogether just to avoid that scrutiny. Injectables, given only twice a year. That changes everything. It becomes a private matter. Something managed discreetly between the patient and their health care provider, away from that daily public eye. Right. Makes sense. And that increased discretion directly helps improve adherence sticking to the treatment, which is absolutely vital for success. And if you zoom out, tackling stigma. It's such a major challenge in global health for so many conditions. This offers a really practical, empowering way forward. 
giving people privacy, dignity. And the source points out this isn't Zambia's first time leading the way, is it? It highlights their consistent leadership. They've apparently also jumped ahead of other countries in adopting injectable pre-EP, that's pre-exposure prophylaxis. Using cabotegravir, given every two months, the article calls it a pioneering step, the first initiated use. Yeah, that's truly remarkable. It shows a really comprehensive strategy, doesn't it? So pre-EP, for anyone listening who might not know, is pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's a preventative measure for people who are HIV negative but might be at higher risk. Mm -hmm. For ages, pre-EP mainly meant taking a daily pill. Right, similar to the treatment side. Exactly. Yeah. And just like with ARVs for treatment, that daily pill, effective as it is, had those same challenges, adherence, potential stigma. Uh -huh. So the significance of a two-monthly injectable pre-EP, which Zambia's adopted, mm. it mirrors the benefits we're talking about for treatment. Fewer doses, more discretion, potentially better adherence for prevention. It really shows this holistic, forward-thinking approach from Zambia. They're not just innovating in treatment, they're leading in prevention too. Mm. Okay, so bringing it all together. For people living with HIV in Zambia, and maybe as a sign for the future, globally, what's the bottom line? What's the direct impact expected from these new twice-a-year ARVs? Well, the hope and the expectation is that these new injectables will do two incredibly important things. One, significantly boost viral suppression rates, and two, just as vital, improve the overall quality of life for people with HIV by drastically cutting down the number of daily doses they have to manage. Can you say a bit more on viral suppression? Yeah. Why is that the key metric and how does it link to quality of life? Sure. Viral suppression is really the ultimate goal of ARV therapy. It means getting the amount of HIV in the body down to very low levels, often so low they're undetectable by standard tests. Okay. And when someone's viral load is undetectable, the virus can't damage their immune system. And crucially, it also means they can't transmit HIV to others sexually. You often hear the phrase, undetectable equals untransmittable, or you. Right. So boosting viral suppression rates means healthier individuals, healthier communities, and fewer new infections. Right. It's huge. And then linking that to quality of life, it's profound. It goes beyond just the medical right. numbers. It's about lessening the daily burden of managing an illness. Fewer meds means more freedom, less stress, better mental and emotional well-being. It lets people live more fully, you know, hmm. be part of their communities without that constant shadow of a daily pill routine. It's a whole person improvement, not just a viral load number. It really is an incredible story unfolding in Zambia. Just to quickly recap then, Zambia is launching biannual injectable ARVs potentially by 2026. Big potential benefits for access, reducing stigma, helping people stick to treatment. And we shouldn't forget their earlier leadership with injectable PEP too. They really are pioneers here. Absolutely. What's happening in Zambia is, I think, a fantastic model for global health innovation. It's more than just a new drug. It's about how policy, new tech, and really understanding those human challenges like stigma, like adherence, can mesh together to genuinely improve lives. It's a powerful example other countries could look to. Patient-centered design making a real difference. Definitely. And as we see medical tech keep advancing, it leaves me thinking, and maybe something for you, our listeners, to ponder, how might these kinds of less invasive, longer lasting treatments reshape how we approach chronic disease management generally? Not just HIV, you know, what other conditions, diabetes, maybe autoimmune diseases could benefit from similar innovations, easing that daily burden for millions. Just something to think about. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive today. Stay curious and stay informed. Mm -hmm.